Greetings all, it's Blue Knight, and welcome back to Slide 3, Honor Among Thieves. Previously, we wrapped up our time in Holland by commencing Operation Turbo Dominant Eagle in quite possibly the fastest run I ever had with that heist. We won the Aces competition, and as a result, Penelope is now the latest member of the Cooper Gang. Today, we're not going to waste any more time and jump into the next episode, A Cold Alliance. After a careful analysis of Dr. M's fortress, Bentley came to the difficult conclusion that his demolition skills just weren't going to be enough. If we wanted to get inside the Cooper vault, we'd have to recruit a full-time demolition specialist. However, Bentley's proposed candidate was a shock. My old enemy, the Panda King. As a member of the original Fiendish Five, he had a part in taking out my dad and stealing pages from the Thievius Raccoonus. Eventually, I caught up with him and I claimed back what he had stolen. There was no way I was gonna let that monster on my team, but Bentley was firm. He discovered the Panda King had left his life of crime and was now a monk living the life of quiet meditation high up in the mountains. I wasn't at all convinced. But there was no denying that he had the skills we needed if we were to succeed. So the gang packed up, put on our disguises, and headed east to China. Stay sharp, team. For all we know, the Panda King's just as dangerous as ever. How can you say that? Just look at him! Have you ever seen someone more at peace with the world? I'll admit, he does look kinda... zenned out. Ah! Uh, Mr. King! Honorable Panda King! We humbly wish to speak with you! I guess he doesn't want to talk. Sorry, Bentley. Let's go. Be realistic, Sly. He's clearly in a deep meditative trance. Huh. It'll take some doing, but I think I see a way to get the team up to his shrine. Good. The walk up here tired me out. I don't want to turn around now. Man, I miss the van. We never had to walk anywhere back then. Okay, okay. Let's just get this over with. Murray, you're up first. If you could get to the top of that pillar, you should be able to use your ball move to bounce all the way up to the Panda King. Okay, bouncing is a lot easier than more walking. Seriously, you guys want to see my blisters? No way, is he serious? Yeah, okay, Master. Bouncing, pillars, piece of cake. Ha, 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 ha. I hear that. Sometimes you've got to be firm. No, seriously, was he for real about the blisters? Cause, uh, I don't know, it's... yeesh. Okay, I know. I know I saw the Guru's eyeball shaking in that cutscene. Now I know for sure that I'm not being crazy for the last time I saw that. So it's pretty simple, just get Murray's Aboriginal ball for that pillar, bounce it up here, piece of cake. Okay! I'm in position! Penelope, you're up next. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Sly could jump onto small points. Those bamboo shoots would be an ideal means of ascent if they weren't spaced so far apart. Hold on, hold on. 
Let me see if I can figure it out for myself. It's, uh, got to do with the ice. Okay, so clearly we need more points in order for Sly to ascend. The problem? Where we're going to get them. The answer? Split each chute down the middle, thereby doubling the points of ascension. However, the ice down there appears too thin to walk on, so there's no way to do it by hand. So, I'll need to use my lightweight remote control car to split the trees for us. Perfect! Well, that's it, exactly! Great! Anything for Sly. I love to see him pull off those athletic moves. Good thing I installed a turret on this little lady. I saw the RC car pop in the background when Penelope, Penelope was talking. Never noticed that before. Maybe that has been there for the longest time, but hey, it might be a digital version thing. So the controls are pretty simple with the RC car. First time we're actually seeing this in, in the entire series. Just accelerate with X and hit R1 to shoot. Much like with the turret back in Venice when we were using that boat in the canal. It can overheat if you hold down the R1 button for too long. Everything you could have wished for. Uh, thanks. It looks great. My pleasure. Really? <laughs> Anytime. Ah, uh, Sly, isn't it time you climbed up there and joined Murray? Yeah, sure. And just like that, we're off with Sly now. We're moving through things pretty quickly in this so far. A lot faster than I thought we would. That seems to be a running theme as of late. First with Holland and now with this. Maybe it's because I spent too much time lollygagging in the past that I never really knew that how fast these jobs could go if you're actually paying attention to what you're doing. <laughs> the spire jump all the way up here. And we're now at the top. Whack the supports up on those pinwheels! Really? Pinwheel destabilization is the cornerstone of this plan! Jump into my hand and I'll throw you up there. So jump and hit circle to do that. And then land on the side of the pinwheel. It's pretty, pretty simple now to do this. This is a lot more... A lot more useful than it was back in Band of Thieves. This throw mechanic was really, really finicky. At least you don't have to aim like you did back in the last game. Just hit X when you're in Murray's hands and you can just be flung up. I'm all done up here. Excellent. Now that the pinwheels are unstable, I just need to light them up with my darts. One shot per rocket should do the trick. Just pull your Pinocchicom and uh, shoot the rockets, like Bentley said. Uh, this will take a little timing to do so, since the more rockets you do light up, the faster the pinwheels gonna spin. Uh, so this last one is going to be a little more a little more difficult possibly to uh, time. Huh? Just make sure to shoot off the dart a little early each time you do light up a rocket. That's the best advice I could give you. Huh? So for this last one, got it. Nice. Guru, feel up for a challenge? How do I have? Well, that's right. You should be able to persuade the guards to help you get up to those rockets. Oh, I am. I wonder what Penelope's looking at. Actually, in the past, I have been able to go down there with uh, Bentley and see that Penelope is just stuck in this pose. You can actually push her off onto the ice. <laughs> And nothing of consequence will happen to her. It's a really weird thing you could do, but it's also really funny as well. I probably should have done that beforehand with Bentley. But oh well, that's something you could try yourself if you do have this game and never tried that before. Alright, so just circle around and climb onto this tiger's back. There's actually two of them here. I thought there was just the one. I guess the other one didn't spawn in. Then jump off, and you're at the rockets. Pretty simple stuff to take care of. 
And now we get to see this awesome cutscene. The rocket is flying around and now can knock the pinwheel down. Well, that's the first one. Good thing to hit the Panic King himself. Otherwise, if I knock him out of his trance, and he might be really upset with, with us. Strong work. That fallen pinwheel should serve as an excellent makeshift elevator. And the pinwheel conveniently lands all the way down there. I think that's more like dumb luck than anything else. There's no way Bailey could have predicted that, despite him being like the brainiac of the group. I mean, come on, this seems like a little impossible to predict or plan out. I agree. He's in a super meditative state. So let's just shout in his ear. Now, to break him out of this trance, We'll need to delve into his mind. A hacksaw, then? No! It'll require channeling. Hi, what da da Sly, sit beside the Panda King. The guru will bridge your minds. I see you carry the cane of the notorious Cooper Thief Clan. Have you come here for revenge? To steal back the Thievius Raccoonus? Whoa! This is just like the time I beat the stuffing out of you. Why should you care if I bury a few worthless villagers in the snow? You are a thief, just like me. Uh, yeah, are you even listening to what I'm saying? Insolent child! You shall pay dearly for your disrespect. Still, to honor your Cooper ancestry, I will send you to your doom with the beauty of my new firework technique. Flame Fool! Uh-oh. And talk about a blast from the past, a really sad one, I must, I must say. We're now reliving the easiest fight from Sly 1. If you didn't see my Sly well Let's Play, I I said I was not a fan of this fight. It's so, so simple that I'm pretty sure even a five-year-old can beat this beat this fight. Or probably someone who's never played video games in their life before can definitely handle the Panda King, no problem. If you're not familiar with this fight from Sly 1, he's only got three attacks. Snap out of it. This is all in your head. My mind is clear, focused on your destruction. But things are gonna be a little different this time. We gotta find a way to break him out of this memory loop. We got three choices, threaten him, play nice, or make him sad. I'll go in order to see how things play out. First, we'll threaten him. You know how this will end. I've already beat you once, I can do it again. I have never known defeat. I am unbeatable. Well, he's not gonna listen to Reese, we'll just beat the stuffing out of him like you did the last time. Maybe that might bring him out of the memory loop. So as I was saying, he's got three attacks. The fiery wheel, the palms of thunder, and the booming chop. It's easily telegraphed because he's gonna say the name out loud, so that gives you more than enough time to dodge whatever maneuver he's going for. That's why this is the easiest fight from Sly 1, it's one that I am... I, I do find memorable, but for the wrong reasons. I will say this, it is a faithful recreation that Sucker Punch did, right down to the very last line of dialogue that these two had before the fight initiated. So, threatening didn't work. Let's try playing nice. Look, I'm here to help you. To get your mind out of this rut. If you truly wish to aid me, stand still and let my fireballs cook your flesh. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna let that happen, Pandy. Sorry about that. I've never lost to you in this fight at all in either game, and I'm not gonna start today. To be honest, I actually played slides 2 and 3 first, 
So I had no connection to this game or to this fight when I first encountered it in Honor Among Thieves. Uh, I ended up playing uh, the first game a little later on. So I knew how to handle this fight after playing this game plenty of times before going back to Sly 1. Uh, let's see something for the past, see how that will stir things up or maybe calm them down. You're just a frustrated firework artist turned homicidal pyromaniac. Am I? Am I? Let us find out. <laughs> okay, that was the wrong thing to say, Sly. You couldn't think of anything else that was a little uh peaceful. Well, I guess I couldn't. I should be surprised about that because Sly was pretty full of anger at the time of Sly One going down. He had all of the ill will against the entire Fiendish Five, and Panda King was not any different. Okay, so now we can do the last choice and bring him out of this memory loop. That is to make him sad. We both know why you're here. You're fixated on the moment of your greatest defeat. I beat you, and forever after you've wondered how it all fell apart. I hate you, Sly Cooper. You've ruined me. Ruined the Panda King. And I've hated you, but that doesn't make any of this real. Years have passed, and, and we both changed. Come out of this trance. Let's meet each other as we are today, and let go of who we were when this fight occurred. You are correct. Forgive me. My mind is not always my own. The Panda King wasn't any more excited about the notion of him joining the gang than I was. If it weren't for the guru, who for some reason really hit it off with the old guy, the whole deal would have been a bust. We could see the anger in the Panda King's eyes as he recounted how he lost a member of his own family. A daughter who was abducted by a powerful general from the Northern Mountains. She was to be the bride in a forced marriage to this unscrupulous ruler, and Panda King was exiled. We agreed to help him recover his lost daughter in exchange for his skills in the Cooper Vault job. I still wasn't convinced this was a good idea, but a deal's a deal. I never noticed this till now, but somehow Bentley's got pictures of the Cooper gang out in the field when we just entered this part of China. That's pretty weird. Either Bentley's a mystic in his own right, or maybe he's a time traveler. I don't know. The way he got those photos is a mystery we will never know. Or at least never know the answer to. So now we're the official part of the China level. We're actually back at the Kulu Mountains, which is a returning locale from Sly 1. I think this is the only time 
we ever do see a returning location from a previous game that does pop up again later on in the Sly Cooper franchise. That's pretty cool to know. So some new gadgets are now available to us are the... Let's see... Well, actually, it's not available yet because we haven't technically done the surveillance or reconnaissance stuff yet. No, wait, there's something new. The temporal lock, which just freezes time temporarily. Uh, I think one's for belly is available too. Yeah, the size destabilizer. For slide, there's jump attack level 2. And I thought there was something else that was a lock for Murray. I guess not. At least not yet. Well, those are the gadgets that are available to us right now. I guess the other Murray gadget I found out about might be unlocked at a later time. So that might be after we complete this phase of jobs. We're officially ready to kick off the episode. What we just went through was another prologue. It's pretty rare to have two prologues of the Sly Cooper, or in one Sly Cooper game, uh, and I think it's the only time that's ever happened in this series. Uh, what we just went through was called King of Fire, and now we're in the official start of uh, a Cold Alliance. So next time, we're gonna kick things off for real with Bentley, as he will attempt to complete the first official job of uh, the Kulun Mountains. Until we meet again, farewell for now.